Hey everybody, welcome back. It's Valagar Alavane. Alright, so we just finished off our first part of part one, which was the Earth Key. Um, now we just have three more keys left to go. Um, so let's head on in to level two. Now again, this part here is where it tends to speed up a little bit. There's a lot less around the corner and, you know, so on and so forth for this section. So it's broken up into kind of the three parts. Circulating this chamber suggests that this is or was the air temple. So the air temple here, um, as you can see, they do have these jets of air, which will create uh, reverse gravity, pushing us back up to the top here. Now our one key is located down there, um, but it is blocked by a barrier. Now, in order to get into said barrier, we need to go in and around. So there are some halls that we got to go through. Um, so again, this does have a little bit of running around to do. Um, so that's the air temple. If we keep heading towards the southern section of this part here, we actually run into the water and the fire now we can actually do those two right away which I am going to be doing oh. yeah if I don't die So the water I'm actually going to do last, and there is a reason for that. So I'm going to do that after our air temple, just because the path down deeper is actually also through the air temple there. So I'm going to start off with our fire temple, and as you can see, we ran into some random spawning traps. Um... Now this can happen even on the like the last video there. Um, it can happen in that section as well. Um, unfortunately, we never ran into any of those, so I wasn't able to show you that. But they can spawn down any of those random paths. Uh, we got them here, so we're able to uh, disable them and keep on going. All right, I'm just gonna head into the fire temple. Now, when you first enter the fire temple, uh, you'll see a, oh, well, you can have a random group of enemies. Oh, this might actually be it. Yeah, it won't let us through that door. Come on, hireling. Oh, that was close. <laughs> you know what? I'll give you a top up as well. <sighs> yeah, I really don't like those right in your face groups of enemies. Um, especially in here, um, they just, they're just rough. So in the fire temple, when you don't run into those random groups, you'll just see a whole bunch of enemies here. Um, and they're all actually passive at the moment. Now, what you got to do is you come in here on the and up in the top. And we can actually um, the pay tribute to the altar itself to the fire. so what we can do is talk to the prefect and well here we go wait so it's asking for you know an offering so we can talk to it. we can actually deposit money depending on how much you deposit it'll actually spawn smaller fights so if you deposit the full 25,000 you 
actually don't have a fight at all. However, if you say the shrine is clearly evil and must be destroyed, then you gotta fight everybody. So, we're actually gonna do that. Despite, you know, better judgment of almost dying a couple of times here. Alright, so let is destroy the shrine. So, as you can see, it also spawns in a few of these salamanders. And just a big old fight. And we might actually made a mistake here. As you can see, these not the easiest of fights. Getting a whole lot of. I'm just glad that this. The, the fire that they give, like the fire damage stack that they give you, doesn't stack. Because I'd have like a hundred stacks at this point. As you can also see, our hireling is now almost out of spell points again. So I'm gonna do my own healing here a little bit. Alright, so once everybody is dead, go ahead and grab your fire temple key, as well as your much deserved loot. Alright. And a finished top. So from here, I'm actually, instead of exiting the same way we came in, we have this one here to the Eastern Halls. Now, what this is going to do is allow us to start working our way around the outside edge here. Uh, just hopefully we don't have a group right on us. So, as you can see, the difficulty with part 2 is there's a lot of teleporting to sections. And each of these sections, if they have a fight right on you, right when you walk in, can be a little difficult. And I don't think the hireling actually is shrining. Yeah, it is not. Bunch of minis. His, he was like, he he was uh, his, his his house was like filled with all of the like relics and artifacts of like a custody battle. So he had like every toy in the world and, and all that stuff. And uh, uh, he really helped me like increase my game. And uh, we brought in other friends and, and one of our friends, uh, his mother completely bought into the satanic panic and forbade him from playing with us anymore 
and then shortly after that, Simon and his mom moved away. So I didn't have anybody in my group anymore. And we kind of handed off friends and family, right? at least whoever wanted to tell the story. Um, and that was around the time that I became a player, that, that I just, you know, I just found people to play with. Yeah. Definitely hard to find a, a dungeon master every now and then, which is like he was saying, you kind of got to hand off that mantle as, you know, it's a totally different experience dun being a dungeon master than it is being a player. And most people prefer being players. Uh, that's why I'm so lucky that my fiance herself, she enjoys being a DM so much. Like, it really lets her creativity flow, and she likes to do a lot of that stuff, so it lets her be essentially a god within the world, and she really enjoys being a dungeon master. Alright, so here it lets us progress through, and of course it won't let us attack them until we get close. Ooh, I can actually use those to my advantage. So yeah, don't feel bad about using, you know, the game's traps to your own advantage. Like, as you can see, these bear traps held them down. Of course, we are going to disable them. Uh, but actually, for now, I am going to leave them up. So we've done off the eastern halls. Now we have the northern halls. So basically this one around that big center where that air temple was, we have a north, east, south, and a west side. And again, like it's it's rough transitioning between them because as you again, as you see, each time we port there's a chance that we're just gonna have enemies right on the other side of these doors. So if you are with the group, I definitely recommend kind of all getting ready and all going through it once. Um, it's definitely a lot safer. More traps. But, I mean, ultimately, if you can handle it, like, as you see, I am in here solo. If you can handle it, you know, there's no harm in going off solo. It does, you know, split up the party. It does go through quick. But ultimately, like, you know, if each part of the party runs into a group of enemies, you're going to quickly get to that dungeon alert red, which can be absolutely absolutely brutal That's tunnel done. But 
yeah, once you're inside these areas, um, it's not too hard as you kind of distance yourself from the enemies. about playing D&D is making up characters and creating my own dungeons and letting my imagination transport me to another world that existed because I made it real. It was, I didn't have the ability to really understand this when I was young, but it was like I was in charge of a movie or a TV show or a really great book and I kept it alive and I got to decide. Death Ward. All right. The artwork in the classic D and D modules from guys like Elmore and artists of that time, artists like Mobius and Frank Frazetta and those guys, it it created how fantasy looks in my imagination. To this day, when I am running a campaign, I am seeing that gorgeous 70s and 80s uh, pen and ink artwork in my imagination as I'm describing things. All right, so down here, uh, we have a little pool, a uh, few ogres, an ogre commander who happened to be a champion. Now, why I want to point this out is when this content first came out, um, there the chest in the water there, um, it is a locked chest. Now, this chest was actually unopenable. Like, you could not pick the lock. My friends and I loved playing this game. It was really my friend Simon who was, like, um, uh, a weird kid like me and uh, sort of got out of PE because he had asthma and was reading the monster manual on the playground and was like, you know, maybe we should do this. And we started getting together to play all the time. Yeah, so that chest, it was locked. It was unpickable. You couldn't open it at all. Um, they've since gone back and, you know, updated that so that it's no longer just a like a fake chest hidden in the water um that you can't pick you can't do anything with it's uh now just a straight out lootable chest as you saw we didn't have to pick any locks or do anything like that all right let's Uh, 
so this up here far north this is generally a spot that you do find those spider nests um, because we already got our frog uh, I am going ahead to break it right away though this is a good one to leave as it is out of the way uh, until you know needed Ooh, and we got a chest in here. So yeah, this chest here uh, is always here behind our locked door. And if I remember correct, I also believe the chest is locked too. Oh, no, the chest is not locked, so just the door. But uh, unfortunately, that chest does not uh, contain any named items. Alright, so we're going to continue on. Uh, another thing that they've gone back and changed so as you see with our, our fire affinity which is actually almost out it uh, what happened is back in the day with this quest uh, those buffs you get they wouldn't actually disappear even when you'd complete the quest so with part two you can actually directly enter in part two right after completing part one. If you do that, you still keep your buffs because you're still technically in a private instance. However, if you happen to enter in a public instance, so like you recall to town because you need to rebuff, which I will be doing before we actually, you know, before I go into recording those parts. Um, if we, you do it that way, then you know it dissipates however back in the day it did not so you'd be able to run in here grab the buffs you know just run in on say for example casual difficulty run in here collect the buffs you know just blitz through as fast as you can because I mean let's face it you're on casual you can and you'd find these altars, you'd get these buffs, and then you can go out and you have an hour long, like, hour long worth of these buffs to go and do, you know, an hour's worth of questing before you had to, you know, come back and essentially refresh them. So obviously they didn't want you to get all these super bonuses here. As nice as it was, it also kind of broke it a little bit because, I mean, let's face it. The reason they give you these extra damages is because you need it in here. But in a lot of these other quests that people, you know, were just taking it and running with it because, like, it made you that much stronger. Like, right now I'm doing an extra 13 fire damage per bolt. Now, imagine 13 fire, acid, cold, lightning, plus then a flat bonus to hit points, a flat damage resistance. <laughs> oh my god, I am so sorry about that. Um, so yeah, so flat damage resistance and all that stuff, like it added up and it really just made for... A not fun time because you were just you know, so overpowered. I love about the real classic D and modules is that they weren't linear. They gave the DM a whole bunch of different encounters and you know, usually a map because we did a lot of and then told the DM if the players go this way, they're probably going to attract goblins from this room. If they don't, then there's goblins there. Uh, if they spend too much time here, then the owlbear is going to come out. If they don't spend a lot of time there, then they can probably get through there without a lot of trouble, and things like that. And there was, there was a story arc 
and there were goals, and there was treasure to loot, and there were bosses to take down, but what we got out of those modules, and what I think inspired the way that we play, um, was how much we were expected to make our own choices. Oh yeah, and that is honestly my favorite thing about D&D, &D is everything is your own choice. So, oh, hey, cool. Named. And he was stuck in the middle of all his disciples. Even better. Still nothing, just some more of the upgradable items, though we are getting those rusty grilled mushrooms, which are required for all of the uh, upgrades there, and you need a decent amount of them. You need about 200. Now, personally, there's nothing out here that I myself actually, you know, use. So generally speaking, I end up, uh, if a member of my guild ever ne reaches out and is like, hey man, I'm looking to upgrade. As these brown rusty grill, or must rusty gill mushrooms are tradable, I always am willing to trade it off and uh, help out my fellow guildmates. All right. And actually, you know, while I'm here, a little bit of shameless promotion here. Uh, if you guys are on the Kyber server and looking for a guild, feel free to message in, ch uh, you know, just even in the YouTube chat here and just, you know, we can get in touch and I can actually give you a guild invite if you are looking to join the Forsaken Legion. As I grew up and as I was a weird, cerebral, withdrawn, awkward, shy kid, I could all this area of the temple once housed the oh. faithful to the air temple. Now the air temple is in disarray, and orcs have taken over these quarters. All right, so I'm gonna as click I on this one again to as I was a weird, redo that one. Withdrawn, awkward, shy kid, I could always go into Dungeons and Dragons where I was awesome. I was either a really powerful wizard or I was a really sneaky thief. Or I was the dungeon master, like, keeping this world alive. It was a place where the stuff that made me weird and uncomfortable on the playground in real life, it made me valuable and important and special. And that all started by myself, kind of going through, like, choose-your-own-adventure style with that simple, simple dungeon crawl. And everything that I ever did since then sort of sprang from that experience. It's amazing just how much this game, like not DDO, but Dungeons and Dragons in general, can just shape who you are. Alright, so now that we're at this section, how he was mentioned about the Air Temple. <laughs> See our doors opening already. Um, inside here, there will be a guy, uh, a named guy who will eventually, when killed, there's a rune in his room. Oh man, forgot that they can open doors now. So, right here, K 
Kelno the Prefect. Inside this room here, um, he'll spawn in, and he'll spawn in a few air methods. Now, this guy is actually required to kill, as he will unlock the rune that we need in order to drop down that barrier. And as you can see, he is essentially a mini boss having, you know, almost 4,000 hit points. don't find the key itself but we find the rune now this drops that barrier in that center room allowing us to actually hop down and pick up that air temple key so again like as you see this is the what, western halls so we didn't actually need to go into the east we didn't need to go in the west and we won't need to go in the south however i am going in just to show you guys what's there, um, as well as hunting down these named enemies. All right, so as you can see, we can head back to our northern halls this way here. Or, uh, actually, you know what? I'm gonna just open that up so it's cleared on our map. Or we can head through the hidden door Continue on to our southern passage. So they have a whole bunch of doors in this section. It can get a little confusing. Um, if you're, especially if you're looking for Kelno, you know, might keep running you into a dead end. Pops there. Hearing it, oh. Found, it sounded like an altar. So down here is actually where we need to go, ultimately. And that's down to dungeon level 3. However, until we pick up our last of our keys, we can't actually progress any further. So there's no point obviously going through that door yet so let's head through the southern halls and clear them out So in this room here, uh, we're also going to have a troll. Now this troll is always up, um, so it doesn't actually count as one of the named enemies. Um, so the chest that he gives, minus the rem chest there, again, doesn't actually spawn in any named gear or even some of the craftable gear um, but it is again a guaranteed chest 
as he is always up. Ooh, another mushroom chest. Oh boy. the second cleric oh well at least it was only one neg level this time but let's fix that also have heal scrolls that I could have been using to heal myself down here it will just push us to our eastern temples which we've already gone through and done so that'll bring us up to that door there we can also head north Ooh, which will bring us to some griffins which will loop up around and take us to our central hall. So there we've gone through and all we've not cleared is this tiny little bit right here. Um, as well as the water temple. So we're going to head back into the central hall. From here, uh, check to make sure no more enemies spawning in. Uh, we're actually going to hop down here as the... Uh, the air temple key is now visible. I do want to point out, as soon as we actually hop down here, it is going to uh, summon in a giant Hezru guardian. So again, another little mini boss. It also shuts off these air vents. Now, there is a little bit of a bug. If you kill the Hezru too fast, the air vents will not turn back on. So I'm really hoping that I don't run into that issue generally speaking when you're doing this at level that doesn't come into play that's more if you're you know level 30 hopping in here to just get some easy uh, materials right. oh glab suit not a just, not glab suit castoro but anyway so here he is drop him down and head back up so now we've got three of the four keys that we need all that's left is our water temple key so we're gonna pop on over here and again hopefully no fights right here nope we're good so for this water temple we have a water altar here and some enemies there to open up our door oh, first we do kind of have some enemies here. So these gargoyles don't actually always spawn. Um, they they kind of they're up on these pedestals there around the corner. They're not always there, and even when they are there, they don't always come after you, or at least not to my. Uh, recollection anyway it's been a long time since I've actually done these quests so in order to activate that water altar we do need to first come over here to the water temple fountain and we get the water from here we pour it into the altar 
which will drop our barrier. As you fill the pool, the barrier is now, as you see, these enemies, they're, they're actually passive towards us right now. Um, and they will remain passive until we get to the end. Now, we also have these doors on the side, which are currently locked, and you cannot pick them. Uh, once we get to the very end here, uh, where the key is, as I'm sure you can see the key, um, and we pick up the key, everyone here is going to become aggressive. Now, the second we pick up a key, it's going to drop a barrier right here, which, well, it's barrier. It's going to trap us in the room with all these cultists. Now, the cultists themselves generally drop fairly quickly. Um, it also is going to have a giant gelatinous cube. So what I am going to do here is I'm actually going to call in my hireling. I'm going to summon my other one and restore some of his hip, uh, spell points. Um, that way it's not completely high and dry. Um, as you can see, the hirelings don't have a great amount of hit points. Uh, they need leveled at all. They were not. They just don't have a lot of hit points. Um, so I'm going to keep them both in here. Though the one is a level 3 with only 80 hit points. You know, it might just prove it's a distraction. Which ultimately, hey, it's a distraction. And it looks like they are out of spell point, or out of points to give. So we're gonna make them aggressive. Yeah, that's it. All right, so Adherence we're gonna hop in here, in this drop in that turret, get our rune arm all charged, and then the pick up the key. So as you can see. <laughs> Everyone almost drops to no hit points as we're fighting this giant living pool. Now the living pool has hit points and does a decent amount of damage. Luckily got stuck. Alright, so now that the ooze is down, what happens is this barrier goes down. You have the three guys in the hall, but it does erect a second barrier here. Now, as you can see on our way out, we got these rune crystals. Now, inside each of these doors, they have a water elemental. Um, that's what we have to kill. She might have them right here at the... So it's that temple water elemental. So, as you see, about 1300 hit points. They got a little bit of hit points. But, you know, ultimately, they're not too, too terrible. And again another water elemental and these are what opens the runes so we don't actually have a uh, <laughs> minus 115 yeah so the, they do hit a little bit hard um, but yeah so those the water elementals themselves are what actually activates and drops the barrier so now that we have all four keys, uh, let's actually just run up and actually dismiss you. Once we have all four, uh, we can use this door here, which does point its western halls, as well as it has our dungeon level three inside. So we can head on through. Uh, we just got a random door that I never opened. And respawning group that, yeah. All right, 
that kind of hurt. But luckily, ooh, gotta love that. It's a hundred and five percent chance to cast it, and we failed. So I'm gonna give us a quick greater heroism, which will boost that up to 115. Definitely should stop that from failing. Okay. Do want to poke my head through this door to see what we missed, which was absolutely nothing. All right, so now where we're wanting to head is down to where this fork is right here. And instead of heading through this door, which is our southern halls, we want to head to this fork. Heading down the stairs into dungeon level three. And actually this run, I think we're actually going to be able to get all of those audios, which will be like one of the first times I've ever done that. All right. So this room here, it kind of gives you a taste of what the end fight of part two is going to be, like the actual end fight of Temple of Elemental Evil. It's kind of like a little mushroom zone. We have some sheltering mushrooms, some cleansing mushrooms, as well we had those toxic mushrooms. So the toxic mushrooms, they give you those spores, um, and actually you get that just simply by being in that room there. Now we can cure it by touching these cleansing mushrooms. The sheltering mushrooms here will shelter us from a big damage attack, which we don't actually have to worry about in here. But I'm just going to grab that cleansing mushroom to cure that last little bit. Alright. So now we're finally heading down. So our last commentary should actually just be right around the corner here. Protected by some traps, okay. Tamper back. That's us. My There's favorite class is the classic uh, AD and D wizard class, which is weird because you would expect that a, a a weird, awkward, shy, uncoordinated, nerdy kid like me would have wanted to be a fighter or a barbarian or someone powerful or someone unlike me, and. I wanted to be a wizard because wizards needed to be smart, right? Intelligence was a really important part of being a wizard. And intelligence mattered to me in real life. And I liked imagining that I could go into a place where I look like this frail, little kind of like Raistlin kind of guy. And uh, some big, cool kid comes in and messes with me and I'm like... I cast a spell, and now you're encased in ice, and I'm leaving, and you suck, and I win. I win because my mind was better than yours. And I will, I think I'll always play Wizards because of that. Yeah, that is very true. So here's where we need all our keys. Um, it breaks down to unlock, and it's leading into our final, kind of our final showdown here. So... 
inside of this room uh, at the very end is our end fight. That's Valrin's chamber. Now, there is a special way to do this fight. Basically, what happens is, I'm going to walk in just a little bit here. It's broken into four sections, one for each of the elements. We got earth, water, that back left corner is air, back right is fire. Now, in each section, it is going to spawn in an elemental enemy. Now, each of these enemies can only be damaged while they're not in their own element. So if you're trying to fight the earth on the earth side, it won't actually do any damage. On the flip side, however, if you bring the air into the earth because it is the opposite aspect, you'll actually do additional damage. So for this, I because I have evasion, or rather, a high reflex. Um, I am still going to cast some resistance on myself, though. Um, what I am going to do is I'm going to actually leave the... F the well, the Earth Elemental is going to be left for last. Um, just because he is just a melee. Um, I am going to work on the Water Elemental and the air elemental first because the air elemental i mean let's just face it he throws you around and that's just annoying the water elemental they do have some fairly good damaging attacks and then finally the fire elemental has well his aoe fireball so i mean it's rough and honestly i don't know why i'm bringing out this little hireling uh she's gonna die like immediately but it might be something. Kind of a last ditch effort run back and get a heal kind of thing. Um, or rather summon her because it's going to place a barrier here for us. So yeah, let's get to it. Um, not super difficult. I am going to toss a distraction here. The wizard fall room slopes high. And I'm going to hop over into the lava. I know. Marissa's also going to get a fire resistance. So as you can see, taking a little bit of extra damage from that elemental stuff. Uh, everybody else kind of ran over to there. So this is where, again, I want to point out, once you get a couple of these guys down, as you see, it spawned in the next part of the fight, which is Creech, who is a giant, basically giant spider. And does a decent amount of damage, so I'm trying to eliminate the other threats here. And then I'm actually going to go get Marissa up. Once Creech dies, uh, or as you can see, once Creech gets weakened, it brings in Falren, and he is the the end boss. Uh, let's just get you on the fire. Um, but as you can see, not the biggest threat. Um, it's the fact that essentially you get everything at once that becomes the the difficulty there 
Now, now that we're done, what we need to do is progress north. Uh, we're going to have a, as you see, a scroll rack here. And just a little bit further, we have his journal. Ballroom's chambers are dimly lit. A mysterious a page, page room, and an orb of golden death. We need to skull, a, uh, a interact with all of them here. If Ballroom's journal is to be so there's the a mysterious page. The has nearly been and the golden orb. Now, once we've collected all of these, it actually erects a portal here. Which will take us just on the outside of his chamber here from here all that's left is to go down the stairs and that is it place the orb on the pedestal and we're done just walking through this door it is complete so as you see 40,000 a decent amount especially considering when you stop to think about all the extras we gotten um, so there's 4,000, 18,000, 9,000, 4,000, you know, we got a lot of experience out of this quest. Though, as you can see at the bottom here, 138 minutes, that's two hours total spent inside here. Um, and again, end chest can have some named items. Again, unfortunately, we didn't get any. All we got was the, the upgradable items here, the comma. Um, so I'm just going to grab this fungus. So from this point here, we can choose to just enter in to the second part. Or you can finish out. Um, and I'm going to show you here on the door. When you select the door to enter the quest, it'll actually ask whether you want to step in on part one or in on part two. So just one moment here while I pour it out. So right here, so when we select the door, are you asking part one or are we stepping into part two? And that is how you would step into part two. Now, though this guy has a check mark on his head for completing, um, it won't actually let you complete until you go back in and complete the second part here, which is part two. Anyway, guys, um, thank you so much for watching um i did drag a little bit longer what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna release actually a third video of this um and i'm just gonna step in on casual there um so if you're interested in looking on how the like the path to take in order to complete quickly um that's the video for you um and it'll just show you again quickly that path to go through temple of elemental evil anyway guys our Temple of Elemental Evil Part 1. We still have a whole other part to do. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you guys later. Have a good one, all.